Hello everyone, welcome to the video. Salt here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new weapon, the Tenet Glaxion. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits. Meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors that would increase weapon performance. That would be things like uh, Warframe abilities, pet splitting statuses and enemies, things like that. I just test the weapon, built out, by itself, and I leave it up to the viewer to make their own intelligent conclusions about those external factors that could be added. So let us get into the Tenet Glaxion here. So it's one of the new weapons that came out here. It is a primary beam weapon. The beam will chain to up to four other targets. So it's very similar to like other chaining weapons, kind of like the new core, um, things like that. So let's look at the build. So interesting things about the Tenet Glaxion is that it's going to have innate cold so cold comes on the weapon. The other uh, interesting thing, um, not exactly specific to the Glaxion, but it's a tenant weapon. And like, uh, like Kuva weapons, tenant weapons, you get to choose a progenitor element for them. And we are going to be choosing toxin for our progenitor element. Now, something to note about this weapon, because it has innate cold, and you get a progenitor element, um, it's important to know that the progenitor element is sits at the very end of the equation. So um, uh, we have toxin here. So the way this is going to read, remember the, the game reads elements from left to right. So it will read primed cryo rounds. It will read the innate cold and then it will read toxin. So there is ways to, uh, if you didn't want to do toxin, there are ways to uh, have your progenitor element um, not mix with the innate cold on it by uh, using a, a mod like over here, because it will mix. Now in my case, I'm using the exact same uh, element that is the innate. So these two of course are not mixing because they're, they're both cold. Um, the other interesting thing about this is that it has a slightly above average uh, crit damage multiplier. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Punch through works on this weapon. Uh, there's a, it's a, During testing, it seemed that it was chaining to about eight enemies, which, which seems like punch through does work. But the wiki is a little bit confusing. I'm just going to read this straight from the wiki and... It was a little bit confusing. I couldn't really fully understand what it was trying to say here. So it says, um, if multiple enemies are hit with the main beam thanks to punch through, up to two chains are generated from each of them. Enemies can be hit by the main beam and by one chain per other enemies hit by the main beam. So that was a little bit confusing to me there. Um, it The way it seemed to, what it seems to say is that each enemy is only chaining two times where usually it chains four. But during testing, it seemed like it was hitting eight enemies. So I'm not really sure if that's correct. I'm not sure if maybe my testing, like it was chaining to random enemies, which it usually doesn't do. So uh, I'm going to be using Prime Shred for now. But maybe when more information comes out, we'll switch to Vial Acceleration. But, you know, it's a minor change, right? Like this one gives 55 fire rate. Vial Acceleration will give 90 fire rate. This one gives Punch Through. Vial Acceleration doesn't. So it's a minor change if... Uh, something comes out and we find out later on that that the uh, the chaining isn't exactly uh, the way I think it is. So, okay, um, let's go over the mods here. So we're going to have Galvanized Chamber <clears throat> for multi-shot. Galvanized Scope for crit chance. Prime Shred for fire rate and 2.2 .2 punch through. Hunter Munitions is going to put a slash proc 30% uh, of the time on our criticals. Uh, our critical on this weapon is going to be close to the 100% mark. Um, so with just critical delay and the basic 120 that you get from Galvanized Scope, we're at 84% crit chance, which is still very good. But then you have all of the uh, conditionals from getting headshot kills that will, inc will eventually increase it past that 100% mark and you'll start getting orange crits uh, occasionally. So it only takes one or two stacks to get you into full yellows. Uh, even if you don't have a single stack, you're getting a lot of yellows because you're still at 84%. So one or two stacks get you into full yellows. And then 
um, more stacks will get you start starting to get oranges. So critical delay is going to be the 200% crit chance. Vital sense is going to be 120% crit damage. Bladed rounds is going to be another 120% crit damage. And prime cryo rounds is going to give us a large uh, 165 uh, cold, uh, cold mod. So it's, it is good once in a while to, to mix, or not once in a while, it's good to mix, um, uh, even on a crit heavy build, it's good to mix some uh, element mods in with it. It's kind of like a synergistic effect with the way uh, the equation works. So as you see on the build here, we are going to be going for a viral slash, basically. So there's not really any reason for us to go crazy on status chance. This weapon has a very high status chance already at 40%. So even not putting a single status chance mod on, that is good enough because all we have is viral. Viral only stacks a 10, so that's all we need. So that's perfect. And we're going to we're going to be getting our slashes uh, through a forced way to get slashes through hunter munitions. So that that's not based on your status chance. In the exilus uh, slot here, we're going to be going for sinister reach to increase beam length. I tried this without sinister reach as I was leveling it, and I didn't really like it. It's it's a little bit too short for my taste. So I think Sinister Reach is going to make this feel a lot more comfortable. In the Arcane slot, we're going to be going for Primary Deadhead. Primary Deadhead increases uh, flat damage by 360%. Gives you, uh, gives you plus 30% headshot multiplier and negative 50% weapon recoil. Uh, the, the weapon recoil is not really useful uh, on this, but I like Primary Deadhead because the stacks last for, for 24 seconds. They don't fall off very quickly. Um, but there is a reason to use primary merciless instead at a certain point. So uh, the unfortunate thing with level cap or when you start getting close to level cap is that enemies have so much armor that they will eventually uh, only take damage from slash. So you're not really going to be getting headshot kills anymore on them. And because of that, uh, primary merciless will beat out primary deadhead if you are intending to do a level cap like run. If you're doing a level cap run or you're doing a very high run, um, you know, seeing maybe like level four, four to five thousand enemies, then Merciless probably would be better than Deadhead because most of your damage is just going to be from Slash. And Merciless only requires kills, where primary Deadhead requires headshot kills. And kills by Slash procs are not headshot kills, of course. So that's something to consider in the Arcane slot. <clears throat> but that should be it for the build here. Um, I also wanted to go over the uh, augment for this. There is a uh, Tenet Glaxion specific augment. Now it is in in the Night Wave. It is over here. I think it's rank 25. It's plus 90% crit damage. So it's a little bit less crit damage than what we have currently on the weapon. And uh, on cold status effects, you get 2% chance for the enemy to drop an energy orb per cold status effect. So on our specific build, we can't make use of this because we don't have cold. Our cold is being mixed to make viral. But there are other ways you can uh, build a Tenet Galaxion, like you could do a, a corrosive cold build. And a corrosive cold build, you could make use of this. All right. Now, um, for this gameplay, because I'm not going to be mixing this with any kind of external factors that increase weapon performance, I'm going to be using a big dumb Anaros with no Archon Shards that increase weapon performance. No mods or arcanes on the Anaros that increase weapon performance. And with a pet with no sentinel weapon and no mods on the pet that increase weapon performance. So, okay, we're going to test this in a Steel Path, uh, Kuva Survival. We'll do 10 minutes here, we'll kill some trash, kill some acolytes, see how it does. Once in a while during this, you're going to see me press my three button, which should not be Nourish. Let me go back out. <laughs> that should not have been Nourish. That should have been... Uh... I don't know why Nourish was on there. Oh, I'm on my big dumb Anaros build. I'm not on my, on my weapon test build. That's why. Okay, I'm on my weapon test build now. So I, I have a Scarab Shell. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Went to press 3 and all of a sudden he's doing the, uh, the sumo plex on the ground. I'm like, what the hell is that? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, 
So once in a while, you're going to see me press my three button, and it's just going to give me armor and status immunity. It's not going to do anything else for, for uh, increasing weapon performance. Okay, so let's start here, and let's uh, let's check this uh, Tenaglaxion out. So we're going to have to get our conditionals up first, and then we'll be slaying. So you're already seeing some orange crits there. Now, uh, ribbon for ribbon slots, like like places where you could put a ribbon over. If you had fire rate on your ribbon, you could put it over prime shred or vile acceleration if you chose to go vile acceleration instead. Um, I would say your ribbon should have fire rate though. Your ribbon should have fire rate if you're going to replace fire rate, and then you would just bank on the other positives that your ribbon has. So that would probably be the best slot for it. Um, the other good slot would be to. Um, put it over bladed rounds. Just remember that you get a little bit more value out of this weapon than other weapons with crit damage because it, it's, it has slightly more than average crit damage. So crit damage is a pretty valuable stat on this weapon. Um, the other one too, if you if you got uh, cold um, or toxic, actually, because it wouldn't really make a difference. If you got cold or toxic on your ribbon, you could replace prime prior rounds. That's another really good place to put a ribbon, actually. Now that I think of it, that probably is the best place to put a ribbon. <laughs> Pepper, how long did it take you to get the uh, <laughs> tenant? You know how long it took me. I, I've been uh, I've been downstairs trying to get this all day. Oh, how many how many um. Yeah, how many times did I have to kill the uh, the larveling or whatever the, the sister's larveling version is? I think five times. I think I had to go through four or five weapons before I got the, the Galaxion to show up. To that uh, first set of life sports, and we'll we'll kind of change the uh, the scenery here, so we're not just all in one place. <laughs> That's why sisters and liches hate me. Yeah, I would say like the average run for a lich or a sister is about like an hour and a half to two hours to to go through the full process of getting one and getting a weapon. But that's once you know the process. Before you know the process, it could take you an entire day to do it. Um, because you you might like kind of screw up on um, uh, putting your little like puzzle pieces in the right place because you don't know the orders, uh, things like that. Once you know all the ins and outs, like an hour and a half to two hours. But before that, uh, it could take you much longer. So we have the acolyte coming. I'm gonna assume that this probably will be bad against the acolyte. Uh, sometimes laser weapons are not super good against them. They're more trash killers. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it'll surprise me. Make sure my stacks of everything are up. Yeah, I think he's behind me. He's the uh, Necros Acolyte. So it's doing pretty much what I thought it was going to do. Pretty mediocre. Not horrible, but definitely not good against the Acolyte. I've lost track of him. Where is he? There he is. I mean, most beam weapons function like this against the Acolyte. Um, like, even the Kuvid Nukor and stuff is not really the best against them. If you went with a corrosive setup, it would be a little bit better. 
It's just that the corrosive setup requires you to um, spend more uh, mod slots on corrosive itself. Okay, we're almost at five minutes here. So when I do these runs, weapons that are average at 10 minutes usually score about 350 to 450 kills. So we'll see what this is at the end. I'm, I'm sure this is going to be well above average. This is a very strong weapon. This, this is kind of like the Kuva Nucor and possibly even better. Has a little bit longer of a range, I believe, with the uh, Sinister Reach on it. So it's a little bit more comfortable to shoot. You don't really have to worry too much about ranges of enemies. Without Sinister Reach, it, it was a little bit uncomfortable. Pepper, Pepper is sick today, so she's she's home from work. She's just chilling, getting better today. Three more minutes left. Um, now for reference, weapons like the Torrid got about a thousand or over uh, for kills for ten minutes. You know, th things are always going to be a little bit RNG, right? Like, so maybe I got like worse spawns on the Torrid. Maybe I could have gotten uh, better if I like farmed in hallways the whole time. So it's not going to be like super consistent, like going off of uh, kill counts. But it's just something I like to kind of compare it to. So like an average weapon like the the Kuva Carrot got about four hundred kills in ten minutes. A really good weapon like the Torrid got about a thousand kills in ten minutes. Oh my goodness, I have big lag spikes. I've been having those crazy lag spikes all day. I don't know what's going on. Um, and then really bad weapons like uh, the Euphona Prime got like 200 or less kills in ten minutes. So I am sure this is going to be well above average. I'm going to guess probably in the seven or 800 uh, range, which would be very, very good. That's excellent. So as you see, it's, it's pretty easy to maintain your um, your scope stacks. But the important thing is, you don't actually need to go crazy like like getting headshots like crazy. Because even with zero scope stacks, you're almost at 100%. You're at 84%. And then as soon as you get like two scope stacks, you'll be in full yellows. And then if you, you can get a little bit more than two scope stacks, if you can get like three, four, or five, you'll see oranges like we're seeing now. Prime Shred has kind of like the novelty effect where you can shoot through walls, which is pretty cool. Um, not hard walls, like like this would be considered a hard wall, but like a door, some like soft decorative cover, things like that, you can shoot through with Prime Shred. So if you see sometimes, I'll, I'll like shoot through a door and I'll hit things behind it. Kind of like, like just right there. So, but like I said, it, it really is going to depend on how the punch through works for me it seemed like it was chaining two different times like i was getting uh two main beams and uh four mini beams off of each main beam when it was chaining in the simulacrum but from reading the wiki it seems like it might not work like that so uh i guess we'll see if it doesn't work like that and it, it basically is just um you know, as, as if it didn't have punch through, then you would use vile acceleration. You get a little bit more fire rate out of it. 
Wait, second Acolyte coming, and we're getting close to that 10-minute mark there. This is Torment. Torment is the Hydroid Acolyte. So he's just a little bit annoying. He turns into a, a puddle, and he goes behind you. Just like that. He torments you. He torments the hell out of you, because he annoys the shit out of you. Oh, he's a puddle, and he's behind you again. All right, so for kills, we have 866, which is crazy. That is, uh, you know, not as good as a Torrid, but that's that's damn near getting up there. That's like what the um, uh, Bratton Incarnan got for me. And again, like, you know, it, it everything's going to be RNG. Maybe my Bratton video, I, I didn't farm in the right places. But that's still extremely good, 866. So I'm going to just uh, ignore this actually. I'm going to head to Extraction just because I'm doing this video. I don't really care about the... Uh, uh, the Steel Essence. We saw how, how it performed on the first Acolyte. It was kind of like, meh, mediocre. Like most beam weapons. Most beam weapons are very mediocre against Acolytes. That's pretty much like all of them. All right. Now what we're going to do uh, next is we're going to do a 10-minute Lua Conjunction. Lua Conjunction is going to be higher-level enemies, so 180 to 200. They're going to be mixed enemies, so they won't all be Grenier. And it's going to force me to fight Thraxes, which are kind of like Super Eximuses. Now, none of that I don't think will be a, an issue because um, uh, this weapon is Heavy Slash, so like it should kill Thraxes pretty quickly. Uh, the only unfortunate thing about Lua Conjunction is that sometimes the spawns are a little bit weird. And that's why I don't really take the kill counts on Lua Conjunction as serious as I do with Kuva Survival. Just because the, the spawns are a little bit weird. Um, they're all corrupted, so they shouldn't fight each other, but they love to just beat the crap out of each other in rooms. And that affects, like, how they move towards your position. So sometimes, like, you're, you're trying to get enemies to come to you so you can farm life support, but they're, they're busy in rooms just beating the crap out of each other. So... It also starts you with these two Drag Masters with no conditionals up. So these Drag Masters are like little mini bosses. So we'll kill these two guys, and then uh, we'll start the mission and get our conditionals up. Most weapons are going to start pretty weak. You have to get your conditionals up before they start being better. So again, once in a while, you'll see me press my three to give myself armor and status mean, and that's the only thing I'll be pressing. So let's start this here. Try to farm as much yellow life supports as we can, so we don't have to use the uh, the big ones. And this does kill um, trash extremely quickly, so I don't think we'll have any uh, issue unless we have spawning issues, and that's that's more of the map and not really the uh, the weapon. And my weapon stolen, of course, as is tradition. This damn drag master, he's down. Now, the, um, the augment for this, I think that would be pretty cool on Warframes that are super energy hungry. So, like, Warframes that are ability spammers, maybe like Protea, things like that. Um, you could use it on this build, though, because this build is not going to produce um, Cold Prox. So, that's the unfortunate thing. You might want to consider, like, a Corrosive Cold might be really good. I don't think it would be as good as this build, but it might be better as as a utility Glaxion. Like if you were using a uh, Protea 
or just another Warframe that was really energy hungry. If you wanted to use that augment because you wanted it to kind of, you wanted it to do damage, but you really wanted it to make more energy orbs too, then the, the way to go might be um, Corrosive Cold, which would be a really good option. Because the progenitor sits at the very end, I think you would need to go with a cold progenitor to produce that, though. And so two of your mod slots would be, be, have to be used to make corrosive. I think if I if I'm like trying to I'm trying to like figure out in my head like how it would sit. I think you would have to go with a uh, cold progenitor, even though your innate is cold. I think you would have to go with a cold progenitor. And, uh, well, maybe not, actually. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, of course, I didn't build it out for Gross and Cold, so I'm trying to, trying to think off the top of my head. <laughs> but I really like the, uh, the Viral setup here. Viral Slash is, uh, pretty crazy. And because of this weapon's innate cold, it doesn't allow you to s easily switch between um, viral and corrosive. That's the only negative thing. So you are kind of stuck and pigeonholed into viral with this setup. Now, viral is usually the best element on non-Whispers content. Like for general gameplay. I'm not talking about anti-faction. Like for general gameplay, viral is usually the best element. And for Whispers content, corrosive is the best element. But in a Whispers content, Viral is, it's okay. So enemies are resistant to Viral, but the proc itself still works. So like, you'll still get boosted health damage on enemies, but you'll, but they'll be a bit resistant. Well, actually not a bit, quite a bit resi uh, resistant to Viral and Slash. Um, but it'll, so they'll kind of end up like, almost like equaling each other out. So, I mean, obviously Corrosive would be better at that point because it'll be a straight buff. But if you didn't want to make the Corrosive build and you wanted to go with this build, um, it wouldn't be horrible for Whispers. It'd be pretty decent. Violence here. Violence is the Banshee Acolyte. So he has Silence. And I don't really care about that. I don't really have any abilities that I care that he turns off. So again, we're seeing like pretty average damage here. Not bad, but not definitely not good. So we have Thraxes here. Thraxes are the most important thing when they come up, because they're the ones that suck life support. So let's get those Thraxes down. So we got a crap load of slash procs on him, so he's gonna tick away here. Oh, he ticks a little bit faster. There we go. Of course, I didn't put Matter Eye on, so it's gonna take a few hits there. Okay. As is tradition, never using Matter Eye. I always tell myself I need to switch to Matter Eye for these uh, for this lure run. Instead of the <laughs> I use a Nairu for the damn 200 armor. I'm a I'm a sucker for armor, but it's not when I go to fight the Thraxes, It's not always good because of it. <laughs> it's like Matter Eye would be so much better in that case. Um, and then the Acolyte must have died from the chain at some point. I don't even remember seeing him die. So it must have, he must have just died from when I was killing the Thraxes and the, the beam chained over to him. I'm going to come down here and have them kind of funnel down the staircase there. Of course, um, when we're talking about the Fire Rate mod, Prime Shred, it's a login reward. So there are going to be a lot of people that don't have Prime Shred, and that's okay because we're not even... Com I'm not 100% sure that Prime Shred produces uh, two, like, fully functional main beams. It may only, like, produce, like, one or, like, kind of, like, one and a half-ish main beams. Um, so don't feel bad if you have to use Vile Acceleration instead. Um, Vile, Vile Acceleration is a, is a fine mod. Hey, instead of 55 fire rate from uh, Prime Shred, you'll be getting 90 fire rate. So you, you get even more fire rate with it. 
And it, it is going to say negative 15 uh, flat damage, but you shouldn't worry about that. Um, just for reference, our arcane gives us plus 360% flat damage. So minus 15 is like literally nothing. You don't even have to consider that. Now on these Lua runs, I am um, kind of expecting to get about 100 less kills than on Kuva Survival because you spend more time fighting big dudes. Um, throughout my all my videos doing this, weapons usually get about 50 to 100 less kills on this Lua run here. But again, sometimes it's a little bit weird too because you, you have weird spawns on Lua. Haven't really had any kind of uh, life support issues. Been farming the yellow life supports pretty consistently here, which is great. Has a large ammo pool, so you don't really have to worry about your ammo either. Uh, you'll be shooting faster with Vile Acceleration, but I think even with Vile Acceleration, you don't have to worry about ammo. I mean, that's a 810 ammo pool. That's pretty crazy. One minute left, and then we'll check our kill count. So we got 866 in Kuva Survival, so we're kind of looking at like 750 probably is what we'll see. Hopefully. Right, we have the Necros Acolyte. He doesn't really get strong until later on in Steel Path when he can summon all the other dead ac uh, acolytes on you. So like right now he can't do anything. He's just kind of a, a sad little acolyte man. Fifteen seconds, we'll get Thraxes up. If the Thraxes come up while he's still up, we're going to focus on Thraxes first. Alright, so we're at 805 in 10 minutes, which is really good. That is... You know, we were, we were kind of expecting 750 because you're expecting to get about like 100 less. But we only got a little bit less. Come on, Unairu. Don't fail me. All right, nice. Salt, why don't you switch to Matarai during these? <laughs> Be like a one-shot on these Thraxes instead of like chasing them around with my Raplak. Hoping, hoping to get like a two-shot maybe. Four. Four-shot. That was a four-shot on that guy. I think I missed one shot though. Let's finish up uh, Misery and we'll head out of here. There he is. He was armor stripped somehow. Okay. So we'll go to extraction here. So yeah, 805. When I when I checked it at 10 minutes, it was 805. This is gonna be higher now because we were we were getting some kills while we were fighting Acolyte. But 805, that's really, really good. This is ex an extremely powerful weapon. Um, as far as the kill counts go, it's it's higher than a lot of the Incarnate weapons I've, I've done this uh, with. So, super good tenant weapon. Uh, definitely worth building out. Uh, it's a little bit weird because of its innate cold and the progenitor you get. So there's there's multiple ways to build this out. I think the viral slash way is probably the the way that is going to scale the best. I think this is the, the best build uh, for scaling into Steel Path. But there are other ways that might be better for utility. Like if you wanted to use this um, 
uh, augment here. And this is a pretty cool augment because, you know, there are there are Warframes that are energy hungry. Like you might want to do a corrosive cold um, uh, Tenaglaxion because you would have cold on it then and you can actually benefit from Photon Overcharge. So, yeah, that's it. That's the uh, Tenaglaxion. That's how to build it out. I hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, consider giving it a like. And if you haven't subbed yet, consider subbing or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And thanks so much, guys. You guys have a good day. Bye.